Welcome to another deep dive, everybody. And today we're going to be talking about something really cool. Ooh, I like cool. Yeah. So, um, you know your immune system. We all we all know that. Yeah, you need it. Yeah, you really need it. Um, but we're going to be talking about specifically some of the cells of your immune system. Okay. Called macrophages, <laughs> and they're super cool because they're always on patrol, keeping you safe from invaders and stuff. Yeah. But they're not just like mindless soldiers. You know, they um, they can adapt and change their tactics based on whatever the threat is. It's true. Their plasticity is incredible. Right. So to unpack all of this, we're going to be looking at an article from Assay Genie called Macrophage Activation, a Keystone in Immune Response and Therapeutic Potential. A mouthful. But trust me, it's packed with insights. It is. It's a very good article, I thought. Yeah, it's really fascinating. So um, you might be surprised how much macrophage activity is relevant to everything from fighting off infections to chronic diseases and even cancer. So uh, ready to unlock the secrets of these powerful cells. Absolutely. Let's go. All right. So before we get into all the different like types of macrophages and stuff, let's just do like a quick macrophage 101. Yeah. Like where do these cells even come from? Well, you can imagine your bone marrow, right? It's constantly churning out all these different types of cells. And among them are these cells called monocytes. Okay. They're like the, the rookies, fresh out of training, ready to be deployed. Really? And when they get deployed into the tissues, that's when they mature into these macrophages that are ready for action. Oh, okay. So they're kind of like those undercover agents who blend into their surroundings. Like, you don't even know they're there. Exactly. And what's fascinating is that you find macrophages practically everywhere. Really? I mean, you find them in your lungs, your skin, your gut. Even your brain. No way. They're like the ultimate security force guarding every corner of your body. Wow. Talk about dedication. Hmm. So I guess they're constantly on the lookout for trouble, right? Yeah. But how do they even know when to spring into action? Like what triggers them to switch from like peaceful patrollers to like these hardcore defenders that we were talking about earlier? Well, you can think of macrophages as having all these little sensors all over their surface. Okay. And they're constantly scanning their environment for danger signals. Okay. So it could be something like a piece of bacteria, mm. right, or a virus, or even a damaged cell. Mm. When those sensors, they get tripped, it sets off this chain reaction inside the macrophage. Oh. Activating it into one of like two main states. Okay. M1, which is the classical activation, yeah. or M2, the alternative activation. Okay, so tell me about this, um, like the M1 attack mode. Mm -hmm. What happens when a macrophage goes into that? Like, does the switch just flip and suddenly they become these raging warriors? So you could say that. Let's say your body gets a cut and bacteria start invading, right? Those bacteria, they release all sorts of nasty molecules like lipopolysaccharides. Lipopolysaccharides. LPS. Okay, LPS. Yeah, LPS. And at the same time, your other immune cells, they sense the invasion. They start sending out alarm signals like interferon gamma. So interferon gamma is kind of like the bad signal for the immune system. Exactly. It's like, hey, everybody, we've got a problem here. Suit up. Right. Okay. And that tells those macrophages, hey, you need to gear up for battle. Whoa. And believe me, when a macrophage receives those signals, it doesn't mess around. It transforms into this M1 macrophage, which is a true killing machine. Okay, walk me through this transformation. What like what changes? Do they do they like bulk up? Do they start carrying weapons? Like what happens? Well, they don't quite bulk up, but they do become incredibly potent microbe killers. Okay. So they release all sorts of toxic chemicals that can literally blow holes in those invading bacteria. Oh, wow. Think of them as tiny grenades just lobbing toxic bombs at those invaders. Oh, that's that's wild. OK. <laughs> and they don't stop there. They also release signals that recruit other immune cells to the battleground. So they're kind of directing the entire immune response. So they're not just like fighting. They're they're actually leading the charge. Right. Like the generals of the immune army. Yeah, that's a great analogy. But just like a good general knows when to retreat. M1 macrophages, they can't just stay in attack mode forever, right? Right, yeah. Because that constant barrage of toxic chemicals, it can actually be pretty damaging to your own tissues. Yeah, I mean, friendly fire is not, not good. Exactly. So you need something to kind of calm things down once the battle is won, you know? Right. And that's where the M2 macrophages come in, the healers, if you will. Oh, okay. They're like the medics arriving on the battlefield to like clean up the debris and start the rebuilding process. Okay, I'm curious, what triggers the M2 activation? Is it like a ceasefire signal? 
It is. So instead of those inflammatory signals like LPS and interferon gamma that mm -hmm. activate the M1 macrophages, M2 activation is triggered by anti-inflammatory signals like IL-4 and IL-13. Oh. So think of them as the peacekeepers. They're telling the M1 macrophages like, all right, guys, stand down. The threat is gone. Time to, time to put down the weapons and start patching things up. Exactly. And these M2 macrophages, they are masters of tissue repair. They release factors that stimulate the growth of new blood vessels, which is like crucial for bringing in nutrients and oxygen to the damaged area. Right. They also help clear out cellular debris, you know, the wreckage of battle. Yeah. And promote the formation of new tissue. They're basically the construction workers of the immune system rebuilding what was destroyed. This is, this is amazing. So, so it really is like this M1, M2 balance is so crucial, right? You need a strong M1 response to eliminate threats, but then you also need those M2 macrophages to step in and, and prevent things from like getting out of control. Exactly. It's like this carefully choreographed dance, and, and when it's working properly, it keeps you healthy. That's a perfect way to put it. But I imagine that, like, things can go wrong sometimes. You know, like, what happens when this delicate balance gets, like, out of whack? Well, that's where things can get really interesting and a little bit scary. Because when that balance tips too far in one direction or the other, that's when it can set the stage for various diseases. Okay, now I'm getting nervous. Tell me more about this. What kind of problems can arise from this imbalance? Well, let's say... Your M1 macrophages stay in attack mode for too long. Oh, no. You know, imagine those inflammatory signals just keep firing even after the threat is gone. So it's like those generals who just can't let go of the battle. Exactly. And that's when you start seeing chronic inflammation. Uh -huh. And this isn't just a minor inconvenience, right? Right. It's a major contributor to a whole host of diseases. Like what? Like rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, even atherosclerosis. Wow. So in those conditions, it's almost like your immune system is attacking your own body. Precisely. For example, in rheumatoid arthritis, your joints become the battlefield. Those overactive M1 macrophages, they're releasing inflammatory chemicals that attack the joint lining. Oh. Leading to pain, swelling, and eventually permanent damage. So it's not just about fighting off germs. It's, it's also about knowing when to stop fighting. Absolutely. This whole this whole M1 M2 balance is so much more complex than I ever imagined. It is, and to make things even more intriguing, there are actually subtypes of M2 macrophages. Really? Like M2A, M2B, and M2C, each with slightly different roles in immune regulation. Wow. But let's let's save those details for later. I think the key takeaway here is that this balance between M1 and M2 activity, it's crucial for maintaining a healthy immune system. Okay, I'm, I'm definitely starting to see that. But I have a question. Yeah. We've been talking a lot about M1 macrophages attacking bacteria. Right. But what about cancer? Do, do macrophages play a role there too? They absolutely do. Yeah, they do. And this is where the role of macrophages gets even more fascinating and perhaps a bit more paradoxical. Okay, how so? Well, on the one hand, M1 macrophages, they can actually be powerful weapons against tumor cells. Whoa. They can recognize those abnormal cells and launch a full-blown attack, you know, preventing the tumor from growing. Okay. But on the other hand, M2 macrophages can actually support tumor growth and spread it. Wait, hold on. So macrophages can, can both fight cancer and help it grow? How is that possible? Well, it all comes down to the tumor microenvironment, okay. which is essentially the area surrounding the tumor. Okay. It's a complex and dynamic place, and it can actually send signals that trick macrophages into adopting an M2 phenotype. So it's like the, the tumor is sending out like propaganda, like brainwashing those macrophages. That's a great way to put it. And once those macrophages switch to that M2 state, they can start aiding the tumor by, you know, promoting angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood vessels that feed the tumor. They also help suppress the immune response against the tumor cells, essentially shielding the tumor from attack. So it's like the like the tumor is hijacking the macrophages and turning them against the body's own defenses. It really is. That's that's incredible. And this dual role of macrophages in cancer it makes them a very attractive target for therapies. Okay. So researchers are exploring ways to either inhibit those M2-associated signals in the tumor microenvironment okay. or reprogram those tumor-associated macrophages towards an M1-like phenotype, oh, okay. essentially flipping them back to the attack mode. So, so potentially you could, like, use therapies to, like, boost the cancer-fighting abilities of macrophages. Yeah. Or prevent them from being manipulated by the tumor. Exactly. That's amazing. It, it sounds like science fiction. It's a rapidly evolving field with a lot of promise. 
But it's not just limited to cancer. Really? Understanding macrophage activation could also lead to better treatments for infectious diseases. This is, this is all so fascinating. So how do infections fit into this whole picture of macrophage activation? Well, think of it this way. A successful immune response to an infection, it requires this carefully orchestrated dance between M1 and M2 macrophages. Okay, I'm intrigued. Tell me more about this dance. So initially, you need that strong M1 response to eliminate the pathogen, right? Yeah. Just like we talked about before. Yeah. But once the infection is under control, it's equally crucial to shift towards M2 activity oh. to resolve inflammation and repair the damage that was caused by the infection. So it's like a, like a two-step process. Yeah. First fight, then heal. Exactly. And if this balance is disrupted, you can end up with chronic inflammation or even impaired tissue repair, which can prolong the infection or lead to other complications. This makes me think of like chronic infections like tuberculosis or even some of the challenges we've seen with long COVID. Could this imbalance in macrophage activation be playing a role in those cases? That's a very insightful observation, and it's definitely an area of active research. Oh, wow. Well, you know, in these chronic or challenging infections, manipulating macrophage activation to enhance pathogen clearance and promote tissue repair, that could be key to improving outcomes. So understanding how to fine-tune this M1-M2 balance could have huge implications for treating a wide range of infections. This is this is all incredibly complex, but also so exciting. I'm, I'm starting to see just how crucial macrophages are to our health. And we're only scratching the surface here. Yeah. The article also mentioned some of the therapeutic possibilities that are emerging from this research. Yes, tell us more about that. What are some of the ways that scientists are trying to target macrophages for therapeutic benefit? Well, there are several really promising avenues being explored right now. One is using biologics, which are essentially drugs that target specific molecules involved in macrophage activation. Okay, so it's like using a guided missile to take out a specific target. That's a great idea. And it's just though. carpet bombing the whole area. Exactly. For instance, there are biologics that can block pro-inflammatory cytokines like TNF-alpha. TNF-alpha. Yeah, that's one of those key signals that drives M1 activation. Okay. So by blocking it, you can dampen down the inflammatory response in conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. Right. Where that excessive M1 activity is a problem. So you're basically taking the foot off the gas pedal when it comes to inflammation. Yeah. But what about the flip side? Can you also use biologics to boost the healing process? Absolutely. There are also biologics that can stimulate anti-inflammatory cytokines like IL-10. Okay. This helps promote M2 activation and kickstart that tissue repair process. That's incredible. It's amazing to think that we can actually develop such targeted therapies to manipulate these cellular processes. It really is. And then there's another approach involving small molecule inhibitors. Okay. These are drugs that interfere with specific signaling pathways within the macrophage itself. So it's like rewiring their internal circuitry to change their behavior. Exactly. Imagine you've got a pathway inside the macrophage that's promoting inflammation. By blocking that pathway with a small molecule inhibitor, you can essentially reprogram the macrophage to be less inflammatory. It's like flipping a switch from attack mode to repair mode. Okay, now that is seriously cool. But you mentioned another even more cutting-edge approach called cell therapy. What's that all about? Cell therapy is like taking things to a whole new level. This involves directly modifying macrophage function, either by genetically engineering them or by using specialized techniques to train them in a lab setting. Wow, cell therapy sounds like something straight out of a science fiction movie. Could you give us an example of how this might work? Imagine you have a patient with cancer. We could extract some of their macrophages, reprogram them in the lab to be super efficient tumor killers, and then reintroduce them back into the body. That would be incredible. You're essentially creating a personalized army of cancer-fighting macrophages. Exactly. And the possibilities go far beyond cancer. Macrophage reprogramming could potentially be used to treat a wide range of diseases. Everything from degenerative conditions to autoimmune disorders. We're really just beginning to explore the possibilities. It's like we're finally starting to understand the language of these cells, and that opens up a whole new world of possibilities. But with any new technology, there must be challenges, right? Mm. What are some of the hurdles researchers face when it comes to developing these macrophage-based therapies? Well, as you can imagine, the immune system is incredibly complex. Right. It's not like a simple machine where you can just tweak one part and everything falls into place. Yeah. 
macrophages don't operate in isolation. Mm. They're constantly interacting with other cells and signaling molecules, creating this incredibly dynamic network of interactions. So it's more like an intricate ecosystem where every change can have ripple effects throughout the entire system. That's a great way to put it. And that means we have to be extremely careful when we try to manipulate the system. One of the biggest challenges is making sure that our interventions don't disrupt that overall balance and inadvertently cause harm. Yeah. For example, if we suppress M1 activity too much, we could leave the body vulnerable to infections. Right. It's all about finding that sweet spot, that Goldilocks zone, where you have enough inflammation to fight off threats, yeah. but not so much that it starts damaging your own tissues. Exactly. And another big challenge is accurately identifying different macrophage activation states. You see, these cells can be quite subtle in how they express themselves. Okay. They don't always wear a uniform that clearly identifies them as M1 or M2. So it's like they're undercover agents who can change their disguises. That's exactly right. And then there's the challenge of delivery. How do you get the drug or the reprogrammed cells to the right place in the body? And how do you ensure that they stay active long enough to have a therapeutic effect? Right. It's no use having these amazing therapies if you can't deliver them where they're needed. Absolutely. So as you can see, there's still a lot of work to be done, but the potential is truly groundbreaking. It's like we've only just discovered this hidden world inside our bodies, mm -hmm. and we're starting to unlock its secrets. It's truly mind-blowing. I agree. And what's so exciting is that this research is moving at an incredible pace. Advances in genomics and proteomics are giving us unprecedented insights into the inner workings of macrophages. And the emerging field of macrophage reprogramming is opening up a whole new possibilities for treating a wide range of diseases. Okay, this has been an amazing journey. So much information, but it's all so fascinating. So to wrap up this part of our deep dive, yeah. what are the key takeaways you want our listeners to remember about macrophage activation? Well, first and foremost, I want them to remember that macrophages are incredibly adaptable and powerful cells. They play critical roles in immunity, disease, and healing. They're like the superheroes of our immune system. I love that. They really are. Mm -hmm. And secondly, that balance between M1 and M2 activation is absolutely crucial. Right. Too much M1 activity can lead to chronic inflammation and autoimmunity, while too much M2 activity can suppress the immune system and even promote tumor growth. It's all about striking the right balance for each situation. Exactly. And finally, I want to leave our listeners with this thought-provoking question. Given what we've learned about the incredible plasticity of macrophages, what other therapeutic possibilities might they hold for the future? That's a fantastic question, and one that I'm sure researchers around the world are eager to answer. If you're interested in learning more about this, I highly recommend checking out the full article from Assay Genie. We'll be sure to link it in the show notes. It's definitely worth a read. And as always, we encourage you to keep digging deeper and exploring the fascinating world of science. You never know what amazing discoveries await. I don't know about you, but I feel like my brain is full of macrophages right now. Boo, me both. They're just, they're so much cooler than I ever realized. They really are, aren't they? Just yeah. quietly working behind the scenes, keeping us healthy. Yeah, and to think we've only just begun to understand their full potential. Like we've opened this tiny door into a whole new universe of possibilities. It's true. It's like, I love that about science, right? There's always more to discover, more mysteries to unravel. So before we before we wrap up this whole deep dive, mm -hmm. is there is there anything else you want to highlight for our listener? Like any key takeaways about macrophage activation that you want to make sure they remember? I think I think we've covered the main points, but I would just reiterate that macrophage activation is a dynamic process, you know? Yeah. It's not just simple on-off switch. Like these cells are constantly adapting, responding to their environment. Yeah. Shifting between those M1 and M2 states to try to yeah. maintain that delicate balance. Right. It's like a constant dance back and forth, yeah. trying to keep things in harmony. Absolutely. And when that harmony is disrupted, like that's when we see the problems like chronic inflammation or even cancer. Exactly. And that's why understanding macrophage activation is so crucial for developing new therapies, right? If we can learn to manipulate this process in a, a precise and targeted way, yeah. we can potentially treat a wide range of diseases. It's like having a secret weapon against some of our biggest health challenges. Absolutely. And it all starts with understanding these amazing cells. Well, I think it's safe to say that our listeners' appreciation for macrophages has grown exponentially thanks to this deep dive. I hope so. Next time they get a cut or feel a cold coming on, they'll have a whole new level of respect for those busy little cells working hard to keep them healthy. It is amazing what our bodies are capable of, isn't it? When we take the time to kind of 
look a little closer. It really is. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us on this incredible journey into the world of macrophage activation. My pleasure. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.